In this video, I will show you how to screen applications and evaluate interviews using the CHRS Recruiting System, also known as PageUp. The dashboard you are seeing now is what we call the Recruiter Dashboard. This view is given to anyone who has completed the appropriate training, such as initiate recruitments or manage recruitments for either staff or faculty. All recruiters and university personnel also have this view. From this view, if you are a member of a search committee or you are a search committee chair, you will see the item Jobs Requiring Panel Review in the Manager Activities window. Simply clicking that link will bring you to a list of all of the jobs for which you are either a search committee chair or a search committee member. Most users who have not taken training will see the tiled dashboard. You may not see all of the tiles shown in this example, but for the purposes of this video, we are going to focus on the search committee review tile. Anyone who is a search committee chair or a search committee member who has not taken the other training will see this tile. In order to review the jobs, you will click this hyperlink to bring you to the page listing the jobs. In this example, we are going to review four different scenarios, one of which is a search committee chair for a faculty position, and then we have search committee members for both staff and faculty positions. To start with, I will look at position 498416, which is the Associate Vice President of Budget Planning and Administration. In this example, our user is a search committee member. As you see, they have the option to view applicants. You'll notice the difference for the search committee chair, where they also have the option to review responses. We will look at that momentarily. But first, we will look at the applicants here for the Associate Vice President. In this example, these six employees, six candidates, excuse me, on the left have applied for this position and we are now in the application screening phase. On the staff side, the application screening is typically only required qualifications as a group or re and preferred qualifications also as a group. The individual qualifications are not listed separately. Those are, however, listed on the job posting and on the position description. So the search committee can easily review those to determine if this candidate meets or does not meet those qualifications. To actually complete the screening, you'll want to first, of course, look at the applications. In order to do that, you're going to need to compile them or look at them individually. Looking at them individually means you can click on the icons to the left of the name to view the resume or the CV if it's a faculty position. And th this item says view the answers. That is the application itself. In order to compile all of these together so you can view one bulk file, you can select all. I will caution you not to compile more than 20 to 25 items at a time as it may slow down the system and you may not get your actual file. So 20 to 25 is a good judge of how many will process at a time. Next, you will click Bulk Compile and Send. So this process will allow you to choose the items you want to include in your packet of, of applications. We highly recommend including the first four items under application details. This will get you the applicant's personal information, such as their contact information. It will get you their profile, which includes education and experience. And it will give you the full application form, as well as any additional forms that have been attached. In the second section, Applicant Documents, you have a couple of options as to how you wish to proceed. If you check every single box, you will ensure that you get everything that is attached to the document, to the application, even things you did not request. If you only wish to include items you requested, you may simply check those boxes individually, such as a cover letter, possibly a diversity statement. You may have something like a personal statement. 
Maybe you've asked for a writing sample. Whatever items you've requested, you can check. And again, if you choose to select all of these boxes, you will get everything the candidate has attached. If they didn't attach something that's in here, it won't matter. It will still process, okay? One thing you do want to make sure is that you get the resume. And this, if you're doing this for a faculty position, the resume is also the CV. There is a CV item here at the top. However, it is not coded in our system to recognize this item. Both the resume and the CV are coded as resume. You will not need any of the recruiter documents, nor will you need to print. So once you've selected the boxes, you will click Create PDF. Processing the applications in this way may take several minutes, especially if you have a large number of applicants. We recommend that only one person on the committee does this task to avoid everyone having to wait for this extended amount of time to process. We recommend that once the applications are compiled, that you put them on a shared Google Drive or some other sort of shared secured drive that only the committee will have access to. This document will give you the application and any items that you've asked to be attached. It will include those in the PDF once it's created and it will just do person by person. When you get to this screen, please turn off the option to send the document by simply clicking no. We do not want you to email the applications ever. Those should be downloaded and moved to a secured share drive. Again, Google Drive works very well for that and we encourage you to do something like that that only the committee can access. Once compiled, you can download your document and depending on your browser settings, it may open automatically for you or you may have to go receipt, retrieve it from your download files. Once you have downloaded your document, you can simply close or say OK, and it will return you to the screening page. You'll want to uncheck the boxes on the left in order to start your screening. The candidates are highlighted on the left hand side, and in order to know which one that you are screening, you will see that it is at the top here and highlighted in a pale blue. If you clicked on another person, it would change that highlight and you would be evaluating their application. But it usually makes sense to start at the top. So the way this works is in the three columns on the right hand side, you will see the selection criteria, the outcome, and then any comments you would like to add. For staff, again, we have globally asked you to review required qualifications and the same with preferred. So once you've looked at the applications, compared those to the required qualifications, you simply come to the outcome and indicate if this person meets the requirements or not. When it is required, they can't just meet some of the requirements. It's all or nothing. They could exceed meeting the requirements, but if they meet everything you've asked for, you can simply select that and it's up to you if you would like to add a comment. Typically, comments should be added if they don't meet the requirements or if they exceed so you can explain why. Always remember with comments, they should be fact-based and about why this person can or cannot do the job. If they meet all of your required qualifications, then you should screen for the preferred qualifications. Now for preferred, they might not meet all of them, but they might meet some. Okay, so if they met some of your requirements, you may then again want to put in a comment as to what they did and did not meet. Okay, again, up to you if you would like to do that. Since you are just in the application screening phase, you will scroll down and skip the interview evaluation at this time. Okay, you'll want to give a comment for your overall summary. Maybe it's something like recommend move to interview, and then you'll give it an overall rating. Once you've done that, you will click save and next. 
and you will see in the left hand column it moved that person to the bottom of the column indicated my overall rating and then it highlighted the next person so i would go through and do this for all of the candidates once i was finished i would click close and then the committee can meet and discuss everything okay now let's take a look at position 498436 assistant professor for which this employee is the search committee chair as you see they have the same option to view all the applicants to provide their feedback however if they have asked the committee to first provide their feedback they may wish to go look at their responses they can do this by clicking view responses this will allow them to view the feedback for all of the candidates from everyone on the committee. Best practice is always to have the committee members individually review the candidates and then come together to discuss any differences between what they found, then for the chair to put in the final review. We understand that sometimes your pools are quite large and that may not be reality. At the end of the day, the minimum that we need is for the search committee chair to enter their responses for each applicant. So in this case, the chair would go in. And as you see, it looks very much like the one we just looked at. The difference here on a faculty position is that the individual qualifications are listed they are not put in a global like required and qual preferred qualifications. They are listed individually. So the faculty uh, screening looks a little bit longer because of that. But you would go through again each person and walk through faculty required qualifications and then faculty preferred qualifications. Okay. Process is exactly the same, just looks a little different. The qualifications are different. After the application screening is complete, the department admin will run a report, which is not covered in this video, that will be done in a separate video. That report will then pull in all of the feedback that's been provided, and that can be saved as an Excel file for sorting, filtering, that sort of thing, for the committee to look at later. The reason I'm telling you that is, once that process is complete, the data that you've keyed will no longer appear on the screening pages. It resides in the system, but you will no longer see it when you go back to review for the next status. So as an example, this top job here, Records and Communications Manager, has already moved to the interview evaluation status. This is a staff position. We will also look at one on the faculty side. As you can see, we now have fewer candidates, only two, and we have different criteria, okay? We now see the interview evaluation information at the bottom, but our staff application screening is blank. It appears that we have not done that, but it is saved in the system. It just does not display for you any longer here. That is why the report is so important to be run. So we would scroll past all of that and get to interview evaluation. The interview evaluation criteria is the same for every staff position, with the exception of managerial supervisory skills. That would only be on positions where that skill is relevant. Okay. The process works the same way, where you would come in and after you've done your interviews, and this would be, a, again, a global evaluation if you've done phone interviews and video interviews, maybe someday on campus interviews, you would globally evaluate the interview process of this candidate, okay? So relevant experience, again, you have the option to say they meet all, none, some, exceeds. And this is where your comments may become a little bit more critical. You now may want to be more specific about why they can or cannot perform the position, okay? So if they exceed certain things, you might want to say why. Something like that. 
And if they don't meet your qualifications, you know, you might say something like, The key with the comments, again, is to make them about why they can or cannot do the work. There is a final evaluation that will take place after this. So you will only do these four, possibly only three if it's not a manager or supervisory position. Come down and give an overall summary. So if you feel this candidate can still move forward in the process, you would indicate that. If not, you would wanna summarize why they can or cannot move forward, all right? Then you will give it an overall rating. Save and exit. Save and next, I should say, I apologize. And then you would move to the next person. So the process works the same no matter which level you're on, whether it's application screening, interview evaluation, or final interview evaluation, the process looks the same, okay? We'll look at one final faculty position here, the Assistant Professor for Recreation or Recreation Therapy, just so you can see the difference in the interview information. So again, you would scroll past the required and preferred qualifications until you got to interview evaluation. And again, this is kind of a global evaluation of all of the interviews you have done, right? So phone interview, video, in-person, whatever the case might be. This is the global overall evaluation of those interviews. So you'll see a few different items here for faculty. There are five. And then there is one overall evaluation, which would typically be done by whomever the hiring manager is. Could be the department chair, could be the dean, whomever that person is doing the final evaluation, they will enter that last piece, okay? But again, the process works the same. It's just that the values may look a little bit different. On the University Personnel website, you can find the supporting documentation for both the faculty and staff screening and evaluating processes. To find those, simply navigate to the UP Process Toolkit in the Recruit section. Open the CHRS Recruiting pages help and then in the user guide section you will find screening applications and evaluating interviews for faculty and also for staff and management recruitments they will detail these steps again with screenshots and directional information 